was heading to the Christmassy end to the Great British Hobbit League's 2023 season. There'd be costumes, frivolity, hats and toy soldiers. But this year, I didn't want to just take a sweaty army. No, 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 no. I had an idea to build an MESBG tribute to my favourite Christmas films. This is my journey. So to get cracking on my Christmas themed army, I start with the only obvious choice, Santa on a sleigh, or Scott Calvin in this instance. But I found straight away, there are no instructions. Seriously, how, how, I, I, I genuinely don't, don't have a clue how to put all this together. It's just, it's just an absolute maze of, of flash and random bits. How, how am I going to make a sledge out of this? I'm going to need a Christmas miracle. I can't fathom how these could possibly glue together in any sensible format. What, what, even, what even are they? I was quickly becoming very frustrated with the building process. Kind of, I'm having to sort of force it into the gap. Oh, Matron! We're on. Oh, shit. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. If that's going in there, then... Is this upside down? Have I done it upside down? No, I haven't done it upside down, have I? Oh, God, please tell me I didn't do it upside down. Why have I done this to myself? But it doesn't look like the rabbit that it's meant to look like. How the hell am I meant to attach the bastard to the... Patience. Haven't had to wait this long to get something hard into a hole since I was a teenager. Oh, grief, it gets worse and worse. Gen genuinely, this is, this is awful. Um, I give up. Uh, my camera's running out of battery. I'm running out of energy. I've been doing this for 45 minutes. And all I've got to show for it is a shit sleigh. But after a restful night and without the camera in the way, I did manage to finally piece together Radagast on his sleigh. What an absolute trial. There's just a few bits of terrain now to glue on, but we're done. Now I need to get festive. Ugh. Immediately I put my little decorative Christmas trees that I got from a railway set on the side of the base and could picture my vision coming to life. It's a lovely model once you've assembled it. But I really did hate assembling this model. But first, onto the painting. I started with a brown undercoat, but I realised I needed to spruce him up a bit and add little Charlie Calvin too. So, with a bit of wooden dowel for presents and a bit of green stuff for the sack, I got to work. Here I use a tiny string of green stuff just to make that little sack have a bit of drawstring around it. And I've got some balls, which I'll use later. And of course, Santa wouldn't be complete without a Santa hat. I got to work painting him in some glorious deep red, starting with corn red and washing it later with some Caraberg crimson and adding plenty of colours for Charlie and the presents too. It wouldn't be a sleigh without the presents after all. I also wanted to make these reins stand out, so I did them in black. Um, so actually, I'm quite happy with how colourful he looks overall, although we still haven't yet finished. Crucially, got to get that white beard sorted, so it took a bit of extra time to do that in grey and then highlight up in white, and decided rather than using the sort of herbs that are tucked in his packet on the side of his waist, turned them into some candy canes. But crucially here, it's all about the fine detailing, including the crosses for the ribbon on the parcels.
A painting tutorial wouldn't be the same without dotting some eyes and then finishing off the base, which I did with bicarb soda mixed with PVA glue, which I also used to decorate the trees that are glued onto the base, alongside the baubles I rolled out of green stuff earlier on. Look, I'm not going to pretend that this is an incredible piece of art, but I am really pleased with it, especially how frustrating Radagast was to build early on. I'm just really happy with some of the details, from, from the little candy cane pouch on the side of Radagast to the little hat that just adds that hint of Christmas on the foot model. The paint job does most of the work, but I'm still overwhelmingly pleased with how my Santa Claus and that's the Santa Claus with an E, or Scott Calvin and son Charlie, have turned out. Now, just to let him dry a little bit. So while Radagast dries, I need to start thinking about the rest of my Christmas themed army. I decided, as we've heard, to go down the film movie route, which means I kind of thought a lot of green stuffing could be on the cards. But I can't be asked of that. So instead, I have mystery box and I'm going to have a look at it. It took ages to arrive in the post. It's come from somewhere on the continent. Yeah. So, you know, that's exciting. So let's delve into this box of dreams and find out one of the many models I'm going to be using to recreate some Christmas movies. So let's have a look. So you might be able to see my address there. Uh, getting into, there's going to be a lot of cutting, here we go, so fragile, that's always a good sign. Um, it's got all the stickers on the front because it was late, so uh, it's got somewhere in France, is that France? I thought it'd come from uh, Germany, but anyway, here we go. So, let's see if we can actually open this. How do we do oh, okay, that's why, it's because it's upside down. <laughs> right, oh, we got something there, right, let's get into the sides. Right, looking good. Right, we've got something. This is ex oh look, how exciting! It's a little envelope. Right, an envelope with no name on it. It's like a little Christmas card. That's cute. Right, let's see what this is. Ooh, I like this. This is very exciting. It says it has arrived. A terrible ritual is about to take a mystery box, brings within some creepy creatures whom you may think you know its identity, and you have them. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know what this is. It's a meeple! Oh my god. I'm in love with this place already. Look at that. They provided a yellow meeple. Because this is the meeplesmith.com. Awesome. Already liking that. And a sticker. The meeplesmith. Awesome news. Loving a bit of this content. Right, let's have a look. The actual model. Last time I opened one of these sorts of kits, I was a little bit disappointed. So let's see what happens this time. So we've got all in the right sort of stuff. We've got some tape, uh, tiny little tiny bits of tape, somebody's hair. Let's travel all the way across the uh, <laughs> across the country. And we've got a model all is it gonna be good? So what movie am I going to be create recreating? We're unrolling, we're unrolling, we're unrolling, we're unrolling. We have the model in hand. It's here. Can we wait and see what it's going to be? You might be able to see it. Oh, you can't quite see it. Let's show it on the close-up cam. This is, that's right, it's John McClane from Die Hard. The best Christmas film ever. Well, actually, it's not not even my favourite Christmas film, but it's awesome. It's got a little bit of a disc to make it a bigger base. I don't actually know whether it's a 25 mil base, but either way, I'm already stoked about this. Look at him! So he's got his little uh, vest. He's got his machine gun. He's got his pack. He's ready to save the tower and kill Snape. We, we don't. Kill snake. But anyway, that's cool. So uh, my idea uh, for this one, uh, it is a 25mm base or thereabouts, um, is that he will be legolas. So I've already got Radagast. So Radagast, uh, obviously the Santa Claus, Santa Claus the movie, or 
you know, whatever, any of the Santa Claus films, um, Miracle on 34th Street, whatever. Uh, we've got Radagast for that. Um, and we've got John McLean from Die Hard as Legolas. So Legolas obviously gets to fire multiple times. He gets to shoot you, um, ex, uh, you know, and then he's not that like, great in combat. Uh, he's not got a sword or anything like that, but he can, you know, give you a bit of a punch if you need to be. So uh, I have had this approved by um, the TO mainly because they clearly know that I don't really care much. So can't wait. So let's get a bit of paint on John McLean. So you know what? I'm pretty happy with this. Full disclosure though, it did cost me, uh, was it 15 euros in the end? But, I mean, is it worth it? No, not really. But I'm very excited for this. At least this guy looks absolutely amazing. Really excited to try him out. So he's undoubtedly an awesome miniature. The detail is great, and he even looks kick-ass like Bruce Willis. Look at the detail on that face. I'm really happy with this model, despite it being perhaps a little expensive. But now, it's time to get our first layers of paint on him. So I start by looking at the jeans, or the uh, the denim on his trousers at the very least, and go with a pretty basic sort of darkish blue. We're going to be highlighting it up and washing it back anyway. Uh, I think this is uh, Mordian blue, the old foundation paint, or it could be ne Necron Abyss. Yes, Necron Abyss, that's right. The next most prominent area is definitely his skin, so I water down a bit of Talarn flesh and put it all over his arms and his face, and I watch... What I watch carefully to avoid his receding hairline, because of course in the first Die Hard film, he does still have a bit of head of hair. It's not shaved off yet. Next I do some neatening up, and then I put my first layer of paint onto the white vest. I use the old bubonic brown here, which is just an old dirty yellowy kind of colour. Any yellows would do, any lightish beigey kind of colours would do. But basically I just wanted to start from something other than that black undercoat to start with the white. So that's what I did. Next I'm using a highlight of the fang on the jeans. Now I'm not doing a normal sort of edge highlight. I'm kind of doing it in, in strokes, horizontal strokes to kind of imitate that denim texture. There's no actual texture on here so I thought I'd just give it an idea by doing light lines across. And I think it's starting to work. The next layer for the vest is bleached bone or screaming skull, uh, which I'm using there just to bring up that white slowly. Now with a bit of Reichlin flesh shade, I'd shade on the arms and the face. Next back to the denim, again with an even lighter shade of bluey grey, I'm building up the layers with just horizontal highlights in the middle of some of those jean textures. Then we go back to the vest with actual white this time. This is Screaming Skull White. To the biceps, I use the Talon Flesh again just to reset that base coat and of course picking out the detail of his biceps and his face, taking plenty of care to leave the shades in the recesses. The model is really detailed. There is lots of depth and definition on his big muscular Christmas arms. The same with his face. There's plenty of detail there, so I leave some nice shading in the creases, the recesses of his cheeks, just to give him that sort of chiseled jawline of an action hero. So going back to the bag and the gun here, which I think just didn't quite get the full black, and there's a little bit of edge uh, edging where the paint has sort of creeped into the edges there. So I just neaten uh, the gun and the rucksack off. We'll talk about the rucksack in a second. Uh, but I also used this opportunity to paint the first gun I've painted on a miniature in quite some time. Uh, I used to paint a lot of 40k, but uh, I've since just abandoned that basically for Middle Earth. So it's nice to uh, uh, put a bit of bolt gun metal onto a gun. Now, so this is the stage the John McLean is at, pretty much halfway through the process. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. You'll note that I missed the feet. I completely missed the feet. I thought they were shoes. Obviously not. We'll come back to the shoes and the feet at uh, some point later on. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm focusing on the bag. I just don't know what it looks like. So, oh. I thought it's time to have a look at some source material. Ah, good old YouTubing.
There's a tattoo on his left arm. Oh, also, I'm that meme, Leonardo DiCaprio. Whoa, whoa. His shirt's not very white. Yeah. This is the scene, he's got the bag. Basically looks brown. There's like nothing, no detail on that bag at all. It is purely black. Let's get back to painting. Uh, well, maybe in an hour. So there are a couple of details I missed in the first pass on the paint job. First, on his right arm, or sort of near his shoulder, there's a scar. You can't quite see it in this picture, but there is one. So I started by doing a darker red for that. Uh, then, of course, as I mentioned in that last clip, there's this tattoo on his left arm of a skull with a cigar and a top hat. And I tried doing something similar to that, but the size is just tiny. So it didn't quite come out how I wanted, but at least there's a black line there. So it looks like I've tried. Uh, and I also put some shading here uh, on the, the, the shirt to make it look a little bit less white. And then finally, uh, of course, by this stage in the movie, when he's got the detonators in that backpack, he's absolutely covered in blood he's been fighting he's been walking over the glass which i've now uh, painted the uh, the little bandages that he makes uh, for himself and uh, the skin tones as well so I've, I've added a bit of blood for the blood god there uh, and also i go back to that backpack just to highlight it i wasn't sure what color it was originally whether it had any detail it's just completely black no extra details so i just wanted to go back with some uh, black and some storm vermin fur and then highlight that up as well as the hair and just keep coming back to that, um, adding a little bit of storm vermin uh, each time so that the bag isn't just completely plain, or that's the idea anyway. Eventually I get to painting the final details here, so I do the eyes in the usual manner with a dot of white uh, painted across. It takes a couple of attempts to neaten it up perfectly, but actually I'm quite happy with uh, the eye holes themselves. I tried something different here, um, he's got green eyes, so I thought I'd do some irises first and then the black pupils. I think the black actually just completely covers up the green, but maybe, maybe, just maybe it adds a tiny little tint uh, of lovely Bruce Willis's uh, emerald eyes. The final detail I wanted to add just to bring this completely to life is for the base, and I used the plastic that uh, one of my other models for this tutorial is going to come from, and I cut it into tiny, tiny little shards. I mean, we're talking like one or two millimeters long. And with a bit of PVA glue, I just glued them to the base, which had already painted uh, in black. It actually came with some details on it already. Um, uh, some sort of little tiny pebbles and stuff like that that, that were kind of molded into the base. Um, so I dry brushed that gray, uh, sort of darkish gray, and then dabbed these little bits of glass on and added some blood for the blood god as well on the, the rearmost glass. So the glass is yet to approach, obviously unencumbered uh, by uh, Bruce Willis slash John McClane's blood. But in this instance, I thought it would be cool to just add a little bit of blood behind his legs as well. And there you go. That is John McClane slash Legolas for my Middle Earth movie tribute. But what's next? Yes, that's right, it's Buddy and Jovi from Elf. 
really excited to get my hands on these exclusive miniatures designed by Forge Master Miniatures. I, I commissioned Sam from Forge Master to do these miniatures for me because I just could not fathom how to turn any models uh, using, green, using green stuff, uh, especially using my poor green stuff skills, into the characters uh, played by Will Ferrell and Zoe Deschanel in one of the best, I think, Christmas movies. So uh, Sam got to work designing them on his 3D CAD system or whatever it is, uh, printed them out and sent them over. Absolutely amazing miniatures and I'm already getting to work painting them in the sort of old Dark Angels green and all that sort of stuff. But uh, uh, it must be said, these these were commissioned directly myself, and which isn't uh, the most cheap of uh, of ways of doing things. But Sam uh, spent an awful lot of time doing these himself, um, so well worth well worth the time. And I believe you can get them on the Forge Master Miniatures website currently as well. So very exciting. So uh, in terms of how I'm painting them, uh, well you can see I'm putting reds and greens uh, involved in quite some quantities. Also, uh, getting a bit of yellow for the tights, uh, Will Ferrell's very, very jaunty tights. You might be able to guess which characters these are representing in the game because of the jaunty dance that we've got here uh, and of course the candle that Jovi, uh, Zoe Deschanel, is holding. It's Tom Bombadil and Goldbury. Very exciting. You, this this pose is iconic. The the one that uh, Sam's chosen to to pose Buddy the elf in. He's got his present there, but he's dancing in exactly the way that uh, that Tom Bombadil does in one of the most famous drawings uh, of the character. So really, really was overwhelmed when I saw the design behind these guys. It's it's absolutely incredible. Um, and Jovi uh, similarly just just kind of a, a replication there of the uh, of the model that uh, that GW have. I'm so pleased with these guys. Uh, the eyes aren't perfect, but the ribbon around Jovi's waist looks amazing. The the present looks fantastic, and the dance, the, the little jolliness of Buddy the Elf, it, it's just really brought it to life for me. I'm absolutely flabbergasted by this miniature set. By this point, time was dead against me. I was rushing, I had a bear to make, and I still actually didn't know what he was going to become. But by God does he become something extraordinary. I got to work clipping away at various things to try and convert my Bayon model into something a little bit more festive, when I had an intriguing idea to turn him into a polar bear. Hmm, that was my first thought anyway, but as the project developed, I was inspired by the green stuff I was sculpting on him. That's right, I had 
a terrible, awful idea to turn this polar bear, or what I thought was going to be a polar bear, into a Grinch. And of course, Bayon had the same treatment. Uh, I spray painted him in a an, an camo green of some sort, gave him an Athonian camo shed wash, and then dry brushed him up with all sorts of different greens, uh, all the way up to scorpion green, which is a very old, sort of slightly electric looking green. Um, but the key detail here for the Grinch for me was actually the yellow eyes, the little pink lips, uh, and the black nose that poked out. May not feel like much or feel that necessary, uh, perhaps in a whole thing where you know he's meant to be green and that's his dominating factor, but these little tiny little spots of colour really really turned the Grinch from being a green stuff monstrosity to being a main character from a Christmas movie. Oh yeah, and I had to add a little bit more festivity just in case, so gave him a candy cane pole to stand next to. So I'm pretty happy with uh, with uh, with my sort of Grinchy bear, um, but it's it's not exactly what I wanted. It just doesn't look right. So I got an idea. A wonderful, awful idea. I know just what to do. I decided to copy something that I've seen um, done in the community before, which is something that Chris Murphitt uh, from the uh, Scotland community uh, has done before. And essentially, he had a beautiful Bjorn model who um, was made up with a, a kind of black static grass uh, as fur. This would look ace if only it had fur. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So that's how I'm going to start. So I've got my uh, static grass applicator. I haven't used this in a while. Attach to tray, get some grass, sprinkle it through here while holding the button. And then hope that, that this works. Because the camera is getting in the way, I'm gonna move things around, but that is a really good start. Really good start, look at that. Great start. Just look at that result. I am over the moon. With pride swelling at the project, I thought I have to round things off. And I did that by creating a display board. Pretty basic stuff, just using a photo frame, a bit of polystyrene and some board to cut some holes out to display my lovely characters. And I even designed a little camera to go on the front, just to hint at the settings for each of the characters. Here they are, in all their glory. The snowy backdrop, John McLean on his glassy base of Nakatomi Plaza. We'll see how they get on in the next video, but in the meantime, I'm just so happy with the Grinch. Buddy and Jovi. John McLean. And of course, Santa Claus. Thanks for watching. Oh. 
and Merry Christmas.